Hello, welcome. This is Steve Suffoletto from Erie Community College near Buffalo, New York. Today, we're going to be talking about printing presses and their six major systems. The purpose of this presentation is to provide new students with a basic introduction to the major components and systems of a printing press. So our conversation is going to be limited to sheet fed, not web, and offset lithography. We want to discuss how the sheet of paper travels through the press from the feeder, the beginning, to the delivery, the end. We want to discuss the lithographic principle of ink water balance on the flat surface plate. We call that a planographic plate. And we want to discuss the offset principle of indirect image transfer from a soft intermediate rubber blanket. So lithography is the printing process, but offset is the image transfer process. So here is what we have in our press lab. We have four Ryobi 2800 CDs. CD means chain delivery. 2800 is the model number uh, and it's the width of the image area, which is about 11 inches. So let's uh, do a tracing of this and incorporate all the major components. And so that we're not distracted by any of the detail in the background, let's just eliminate that. So now we're just looking at the major printing systems. Any printing press will have six major systems. It'll have a feeder, a register system, a print unit, a dampening system, an inking system, and a delivery. So let's talk about more of these in detail. So once again, the six major components on a sheet fed offset lithographic printing press using the Ryobi 2800 as an example are the feeder, the registration system, the print unit, the dampening system, the inking system, and the delivery. So the feeder is going to be for sheets of paper, cut sheets. It's a sheet fed press. It's not a web press or a row press. And you have to adjust the pile height. That's the adjustment on the Ryobi. And then you have to separate the sheets with an air blast. Again, that's the adjustment on the Ryobi. And then you have to lift or pick up the sheets with a vacuum. There is a picture of the vacuum sucker. Then the sheet gets forwarded. Now there's two types of feeders. There's a successive sheet feeder, which picks up the sheet at the lead edge. Therefore, you can only pick up one sheet at a time and the sheets are separated with an air gap. A more professional system is called a stream feeder where the vacuum suckers are located at the rear or the tail edge of the sheet and the sheets get underlapped under each other. Now, a concern you should have at the feeder is that you don't pick up two sheets simultaneously. We call that a double. And if you pick up a double, you'll find blanks in your delivery. So you want to try to prevent that. The next system on a printing press would be the registration system. And it consists of three points. So the positioning of the sheet to the press is registration. Three point control means you have to form a right triangle, a right angle. It has to be perpendicular. So we're talking about squareness. So squareness needs to define two edges and you do that with three points. So you have these head or front lays or stops. They determine the front margin. These are often abbreviated or symbolized with two X's for the gripper edge. And then you have the side guide edge, a single X representation. Now the side guide can be a push or a pull type. Pull or better than push. This might be a distinction between a duplicator and a printing press. A duplicator might have a push guide but a printing press would have a pull guide. And uh, another distinction between a duplicator and printing press is a duplicator might have only one guide, side guide, but a printing press would have two side guides. And that's because when you do a second pass layout, like a sheet wise or a work and back or a work and turn, you need to use the opposite or the other side of the sheet for your side guide. And then once you get that sheet positioned with the correct margins, you have to in feed it into the impression cylinder grippers. So there's going to be some type of mechanism to do that. Now on a Ryobi 2800, 
is a direct feed system. So you're basically over buckling with a direct feed. Now on a real printing press, you might have a swing arm or some type of rotary drum or wheel that will insert the sheet into the impression cylinder grippers. Now let's just talk briefly about running speeds. Web presses using a roll of paper are four times faster than a sheet fed press using cut sheets. And that's because on a sheet fed press, each and every individual sheet of paper has to be stopped, then pulled into position or pushed into position, and then finally inserted into the impression cylinder grippers. So the press is going, not the press itself, but the sheet of paper travel is going from full speed to a dead stop, being moved, and then going back to full speed again. That takes time. That's why a sheet fed press is slower than a web press. So what we might want to try to do is measure the cylinder diameters, their circumferences, so that we can get their total circumference area. And then we can calculate what percentage of that cylinder is the gap, because it's the gap that determines the amount of time it takes to stop the sheet, position the sheet, and insert the sheet into the impression cylinder grippers. Another system on the printing press is the print unit. And the print unit consists of three cylinders. You have the plate cylinder, the blanket cylinder, and the impression cylinder. Now the impression cylinder is sometimes called a back cylinder or a steel cylinder, and its diameter might be one to one, same size, or it might be larger than the blanket cylinder. It might be twice as large as the blanket cylinder. Sometimes this is called a jumbo impression cylinder. And then some printing presses are called perfecting presses. Perfecting means you can print on both sides of the sheet of paper, one pass through the press. If it doesn't perfect, then it's just called a straight press. Now some presses I have a convertible perfector, which means you can run the press straight, or you can convert it over into a perfecting press. And then uh, if you're going to print multiple colors, you have to have transfer cylinders between units, stations, towers, or decks. Another system on the printing press would be your dampener. Now, of course, lithography works on the principle of ink and water not readily mixing. So we have to have the water or the fountain solution. Now, we'll have a discussion about that later, but now we're just talking about how do you apply the fountain solution, and you do that with your dampening system. So the old presses had conventional dampeners, which had a molten cloth covered roller and a ductor. It was very difficult to get ink water balanced with this old technology. So now we have a continuous dampener, which is a three row flooded nip. Some dampeners are integrated into the anchor, so they don't have their own dedicated water form roller. They use one of the ink form rollers to apply the dampening solution to the plate. Some famous dampeners were called Dahlgren, Epic, Compact, and Crestline. The 3302M and C models that we have have Crestline dampeners. Another system on a printing press would be the inking system. And the inking system consists of all these rollers. We call this an ink train. They have all different types of rollers. They have different purposes and different sizes. When we have our separate lecture on inking, ink, and rollers, we'll discuss that in more detail. I do want to mention to you that ISO International Standards Organization 2846 has a target aim of one micron for the ink film thickness or IFT. So when you put ink on paper in offset lithography, the thickness of that ink is about one micron, extremely thin. One micron is one millionth of a meter. And finally, the last system on a printing press will be called your delivery. A delivery typically has gripper bars on a chain that ride on a sprocket. There's a cam that allows you to adjust the timing of the sheet release so you can make that sheet drop sooner or later. The delivery, we want to make sure we don't get any marking there. So we might have something called a star wheel that supports the sheet so it doesn't cave in. 
There may be a specially treated cheesecloth called Super Blue. This cheesecloth gets soaked in a silicone and it's dyed blue. That's why it's called Super Blue. The delivery will have joggers, side and rear joggers or front joggers to make sure the paper is very neatly stacked. And because offset lithography uses an oil-based ink, we may spray a powder on the, onto the sheets to separate them so that we don't get any set off or blocking. But to assist the inks drying quicker, we might have some type of a dryer. In the case of a small duplicator, it may be as simple as a heat lamp. Okay, so we talked about the major components of a printing press, but it's really all about the make ready. So prior to running production, the press must be made ready, which we call make ready, and we abbreviate that MR. Some people also call this a setup or a change over. Now the quicker, the faster, and the shorter you can perform that make ready, the sooner we can start production printing, which we call running. Because press run quantities are getting shorter, make ready becomes more important because it becomes a larger percentage of your time. Digital presses don't have any make ready time for getting the register to fit and getting the color match. So for offset lithography to compete with digital, we have to do everything possible to reduce our make ready times and make them as short and as quick and as fast as possible. So most of the automated features on printing presses today are to reduce make ready time, not to run faster because we're already running pretty fast. Now let's have a quick conversation about the difference between a press and a duplicator. Some people might say it's all about price. Brand new, their IOB 2800 it was around $25,000. A printing press can be multi-million dollars. Some people classify presses and duplicators by their size, the width of the paper. We have a quarter size press size, which is 18 inches. We have a half size press, which is around 29 inches. And then we have a full size press, which is 40 inches, which can pr print a uh, 16 page signature, eight pages on a side. Another way to classify a press versus a duplicator is by the number of colors. Typically a duplicator would be just a single color, one color or perhaps a two-color press with a retrofitted T51 head, T for Thompson. So printing presses are typically four colors or more, five and six, even up to eight, ten, and twelve colors. But the real difference physically, mechanically, from a design uh, point of view, is that printing presses have bearers. Now bearers are uh, outer rings on the cylinders, so you have metal-to-metal -metal contact. This helps smooth out and make sure that your pressures are correct. The other difference between a press and a duplicator is just the amount of automation and technology. Duplicators are typically very simple, very basic. Most of the tasks are done manually. Printing presses are heavily automated, so they have automatic everything just about. Now, are presses easier to operate than duplicators? Well, I tell my students that when we get to the 3302s, which have more automated technology, they're much more simpler to operate than the 2800s that have almost no automated technology. Everything has to be done manually. So here's a list of some major printing press manufacturers. These are conventional printing presses. Heidelberg, German, uh, KBA, Koning and Bohr, uh, German, Komori, Komori is Japanese, uh, Man Roland, German, and RMGT, which is a combination of Ryobi and Mitsubishi. Some older presses you might still see out there are the Asolna, Sakurai, Akiyama, Sinohara, and some discontinued printing presses would be the Harris, Miller, Mealy and Planeta. Here's a list of printing duplicator manufacturers. A.B. Dick and their famous Model 360. A.B. Dick really started the revolution of uh, quick print, small printing companies back in the 1950s. They were sold to iTech, and then iTech was sold to Ryobi. 
So there are equivalent model numbers of ABDEC, ITEC, and Ryobi presses. They're all very, very similar. A dresser graph multilith had their famous model 1250. What was nice about that press is it actually had a push side guide to it. ATF, the American Type Foundry, had a press which was named a Chief, and then it was renamed to a Davidson. And then there was a Hamada printing duplicator. So once again, I appreciate your attendance and participation during this presentation. Hopefully you found this interesting and informative, and I welcome and encourage you to provide feedback for continuous improvement. Until we see each other again, bye now.